Uh, oh boy, I'm good. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Father. <laughs> oh, let's see. Here we go. Here we go. I have an ex uh, this this is going to be an exciting uh, Father's Day uh, sermon. Starts off like this. Uh, draw a line in the sand types. You know, we have been on that for a while. But we, we're not the only ones who've been talking about drawing a line in the sand. Other churches, other individuals on Facebook have popped, and I hope that the Facebook people get the hundred that they need, especially if they're going to talk about drawing a line in the sand referring to Watch this. Here's some steps for for drawing a line in the sand. First of all, you have to know why you want to draw a line in the sand. If if we're talking about drawing a line in the sand, you have to know why you're doing that. We got that today in, in our singing. In in one of the songs that we just the first song that we just sung today, it was it was. Glory and honor is due him. And, and the praise and worship leader started the song, and then she stopped it. And when she stopped it, she says, do you really mean that? So if you're going to draw a line in the sand, you got to know why you're going to do it. And, and, and then when you're going to do it, do it with all your might and all your strength. So here you go, drawing a line in the sand, and you know now why you're going to do it, because we're out there. We're out there. We're more, we're more out there now than we used to be with some of the other issues that we have. Watch this. The next thing, set. When you draw a line in the sand, you set boundaries. You set a boundary to, you, 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 you heard me say it before. You set a boundary and you say, I'm on this side and this is what I'm going to believe. And guess what you, you're saying to, to the individuals on the other side. You are not going to make me go to and fro with my understanding meaning that I'm like a wave out there on the ocean and I agree with this. Oh, and there's another wave. Well, I'm agree with that. Oh, there's another wave. And he, nah, we're not going to be like that. When we start talking about drawing a line in the sand, you're going to be on that side, that side, whatever it is. You're going to be on that side with the understanding why you are there. And then you're going to say, this is where I'm going to stand. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. You got the boundaries, you got the set. And the last one is to protect a bond with unity. When you get on the other side, when you're on the side, you've got to draw, when you draw that line, you're on the other side of the line that is against you. You want to be in unity. You don't want to be on that side and confused about why you're there because everybody, everyone got their own opinion of what to do on that side of the fence. We need to be united. Draw the line in the sand. Watch this. And I heard it this morning. And when I heard it this morning, it brought me to tears. And I had to get myself together. And I'm pretty much not together, but I'm still going to preach right now. It says, draw a line in the sand. What? With love. With love. What kind of love? If you would turn, I, I, you don't have to turn it. Just know this scripture. It is found in Ephesians 4.32. And be kind to one another. Tender hearted. So, so if there's a line in the sand, we all need to be this way. Tender hearted. See, it's, it's, it's something that you can look up and say, hmm, we can be tender hearted and you should you know what that is. So now you can work on us being united with tender hearted. And be kind to one another. Forgiving one another. We can be on that side and be in unity with forgiving one another so that we can be a, 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 a force to be reckoned with on the other side of that line. And even as God and in Christ forgave you, you forgive others. When we get on that side, we're going to be dangerous. When we get united, we're going to be fearfully dangerous. So, what am I saying? We use the word honor, and we use the word love. 
Now I want to go to the word honor for why we're going to talk about on Father's Day. First, what is honor having? What is honor? This is the meaning of it. And, and I'm going to say it and I'm going to keep on saying it. So you're going to hear it more than this time. So don't ask me to repeat it because I am going to repeat it. Honor is having high respect, great esteem, adhering to what is right, and to a conventional standard of conduct. That little part right there where I said, or to a conventional standard of conduct. I am not going to be offensive to anyone out here on Father's Day who is saying their father is this or their father is that. I'm not going there. And I'm not going to try to change the minds of when, right here where it says, to a conventional standard of conduct. I'm not going to argue with that. Because you know what that is saying? That is saying the individual does, does not understand what is right. I'm not going to fuss with them today. I'm not going to fuss with anyone out there who have a problem with what God said something is right. That's the way it is. Okay? Now here we go. I'm building you up for this. Who is your father? We're going to we celebrate. And, and one time, I didn't care that much about celebrating Father's Day. Because number one, I didn't think anyone knew what Father's Day was really about. Did you know where Father's Day come from? Did you know it, it was actually a, a place in our in the United States of America's history back in 1909 by Saron Smart Dobbs from Spokane, Spokane, Washington. She respected and honored her father. She respected and honored her father. She, she looked at her father and saw him to be highly respected, great esteem, appeared to what was right. He was in the service. And a lot of people who were in the service, when, when you start talking about we're going to honor someone in the service, they are given, they have this in common highly respected to what was given to them as a command over them. Highly respected. Esteem. Appeared to what is right. Those men or any man. And we're talking about Father's Day. And like I said, I'm not going to get into anything else other than I'm talking about Father's Day. Having great respect. Esteem to what is right. And here is a, 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 an individual that demonstrated that. And a couple of, well, a month ago, or not even a month ago, we celebrated Memorials Day. And did you know that one of the individuals who's still living today, he, they almost say he might be the only one, he might be the last one, the last man that, that, that was on the battlefield over in France when they were given a command some 30,000 people died on one day to go battle off of a command from a command center now what made that happen with that many people dying because the history did not teach it until about right about now now you're getting a little teaching about the history about there was a command that went wrong. Why does a command go wrong? Because you didn't follow what the command, if the commander has said, someone fell short and a lot of people suffered on that particular day. On that time, I must go there. Because if you want to talk about honor, you have to go in the Bible. And if you want to talk about honor with the, with a man and a woman, you still got to go to the Bible. Exodus. 
Exodus 20, verse 12. We already know what it says. And if you don't know what it says, I'll say it again. In Exodus. Honor. Uh, uh, I'm getting in. Honor. Having high esteem. So that's, that's, when, when that scripture was written, it was written with the word honor, meaning that you have high esteem, great esteem, up here to what is right. Now, if you don't have that, watch this, you don't have to honor that. You don't have to honor a person if he, if he doesn't deserve to be honored. <coughs> the people who were honored at that time, way back in World War II, they deserved to be honored. That's why they're still doing it every Memorial's Day. They're going to do it till that last man die. And they're going to continue to do it because they put the word in front of the people who said, I am going to honor what is right. They, whatever they thought was right, they said they were going to honor it. Now, those who didn't, How would you like to be on a battlefield? Let me give you a quick example of machine gun firing right about head high. When you're coming off of a boat, the thing comes down. I was in the Navy. You go to the shore. You cannot see the shore where you're sitting or you're standing. You're standing there and, and this thing is making this loud noise and so is a whole bunch of guns. And so is a, noise is all over the place. And people are dying. You can hear them screaming. And you can hear it zip, zip, ping, ping, those bullets hitting off of metal. Then that thing falls down. You gotta run out. How would you like to say, when you run out, you turn around and look at somebody who's in there like this, and he's not running out? Would you honor him? The answer would be no. No military man will sit up there. That we're not talking about those who didn't honor. We're talking about those who did honor. And if you got a father who did these things right here, who did having high esteem, respect what is great, <coughs> you honor him today. Now, like I said, I'm not going to get into the deadbeat dad. I'm not going to get into that. Don't argue. I'm not going to argue that. I want you to honor the one who deserves to be honored. Why? Because of the definition of honor. If you got a person who is doing that, honor them. Mother's Day, honor her. The Bible's very clear with it. Honor. He didn't, they didn't say if they did or if they didn't, if they had that characteristic you honor that individual. Draw the line in the sand. There's another scripture that comes out. These are six ones and it involves the children. <coughs> children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. And it's the first commandment. Which scripture is that? With a promise. That is Ephesians 6, verse 1. And you can read it on your time. You can read it every time. Because when they start talking about a child, that's the child to turn around. Remember what my wife said when they giggled and laughed about if you was to ask right now, how would you, uh, how would you explain how your father God is? Mm -hmm. And then they, all, they asked some children, and they were giggling and laughing. And, and they said little cute things about you. We should say some cute things about our God that we serve, who is our Father. Because guess what? He upholds that honored word. He says that, no, he didn't say it. He is it. He's a sovereign God. He's a, he's a God that is a God that will not make a mistake, cannot make a mistake, is the same yesterday and today. The same yesterday and today. Why not giggle and feel good about that kind of person or 
that kind of God. Now, if you want to bring it back to a person, that means that person wants to do what? Look like, sound like, talk like, act like the God that is the commander. Watch this. He commands from, a, from his command, what is it? Command post? Command office? Command and control center. Control center. He controls everything. Why? Because he made everything. He knows everything. And he says, I sent my son down to you so you can get a chance to know who I am by his honoring his father. He didn't have any problem honoring his father because he knew what? He knew that his father was esteemed, highly respected. For those who believe in God, we highly respect him. And if you don't believe in him, it would be a good day for you to start respecting something that you didn't know made you. Something that you didn't know allowed you to breathe his air. Something that you didn't know that was forever not changing that you use every day. What is that that you use every day that's not changing? H2O. Without it, how long do you think you can last on this planet? H2O. No, three days. Some people claim they, they, they can do five and six because they're on the water going up and down. That they're on the water going up and down every once in a while when that moisture goes through the air, they, their body's saying, let me get a little bit of this moisture so you can last a little bit longer so you can be in the Guinness Books of Records because you're still going to die unless you get water. But you can't change water. You take that number away from H2O, you won't have water. You, you remove any of those elements from that, you won't have it. God is saying, I made the elements. And I am never changing. You can't take nothing from me. Because you can't. You tried to take it from my son. And all he did was ask me to forgive us. For trying to take away from the God's son who was sent here for us. He died for us. We couldn't see it. We didn't understand it. We wanted to take from him. You already know some of the stories of what the leaders wanted to do. They wanted to destroy a man from God who was doing what God said to do. It was a living example. They had no proof why they should have killed him. They even said that. Some, some of their leaders actually said, we can't kill him because he didn't sin. He didn't do he was still doing what his father, who we said we know, told him what to do. So you can't kill him. But he did. Guess what? We cannot take the two out of H2O. I don't care how hard we try. And they could not take the life out of Jesus Christ because he was forever when he got here. He was trying to get us to be forever like him. He was trying to get us to say, if you honor me, not me, if you honor my father, you can be where I am. So you need to live an example. He said, oh, first, honor your father and your mother. Can you do that? No, I can't do that because I can't do it. If, if they didn't respect you, then you won't know. But I heard today that if you are the one who is doing this honor? Or if you are the one that is being respected, if you are the one that goes out on a limb because you love tenderheartedly, because you are doing the things that God asks, then you become the one who to be honored. My heart. <clears throat> Gotta drink this. My heart goes out to every child because that's the beginning of wanting to know how to argue, an honor. When a child doesn't know 
what honor is. Where they can't find it in their house. My heart hurts for that individual. My heart hurts for an individual out there who tries to say that this is the way and that way is not God's. And then they try to put it on other people and that is not the right way. That's why the word that I read at first when it says a to a conventional standard of conduct, that's a person who doesn't know what right is. So you make a conventional, you make you make something goes down through history as, uh, what did they use that word um, for cult? They cancel culture. I'm not going to talk bad about them. They're going to do what they know, what they know to do. Keep on try to find out how to make something right. And when they cannot make something right, they have the problem. But if we make it right, we are honored by the people who are growing up. That's why I cried. Because I had talks with a son that looked at me to be honored. I have a daughter. Matter of fact, I got two daughters. They're capable. I got two daughters. I have to have to say it like that. I got, no, you know, there you go. I have two daughters. She almost messed up. I'm going to say it. Again. I have two daughters capable of, of, of giving me anything I want. This is to help me get away from crying. Anything I want. All I got to do is tell them what I want. I can tell my daughters right now. I want a 2024, uh, 2024 truck. <laughs> Ford F-150. Ford F-150. Give me a Ford F-C. They even saying Ford F-150. They, have, they have the ability to do it because they honored me. <laughs> hey, hey, do I have a hand? Well, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm talking about a model. <laughs> now, my wife, my wife, was, I got to say this because my, she kept on pointing. She kept on pointing. She said, what's she if, if you could look at a camera, camera she, you say, well, who is she pointing? Well, I got, a, I got a daughter right here. She mine. She mine, like the other ones. They mine. And, and she's not a spiritual one. She mine because she said, I'm going to be your dad. Your, your, your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Stand right there. <laughs> and nothing going to change that. She put me in the H2O factor. Right. Can't remove it. I am that one. So, and, and, uh, I, I say that because if there wasn't a person for her to see that was to be respected, to adhere to the truth and what was right, no telling what direction she would go in. She would have to, I would pray that she would find, she would have found a father figure like the one she has right now. And then, by the way, she's capable too. Can do that you were talking about a model before you said. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see right now, you can see right now, from the command center, from the command center, can you imagine how much fun our God has with children, us, who now want him as the father. I cry for the ones who can't grasp a hold of wanting to be saved so they can get a chance to know this father who's going to treat them with respect and have high esteem and going to do what is right. 
he will never ever make a mistake with you. He will never ever make you feel like you're nothing. Because in his sight, he loves the ground you walk on. Because he put the ground down there for you to walk on. He loves you no matter what you look like, no matter what you sound like. You can dress up, you can dress down, he will still love you. He will still protect you at all times. See, this is when you say, I accept you as my personal savior. You want to step on that side. You, you draw the line and you be on the side of a God that says, I love you. Not just love you, love everyone in this whole world yes. the same way he loves you. So that means if you're sitting around, my daddy loves me. The next person who says I'm saved, my daddy loves me. Mm -hmm. How much more? You can't compare it to one another. Because it's in your eyes. It's going to be how you behold <coughs> I may not be a good father for somebody down the street, but I'm a good father for the ones who know me now. God is a good father for all of us. And he is not going to stop being a good father. He is the one. There's a song. That uh, he's the one. How does this song go? Uh, when you bought the, the people who made that song of the, the uh, uh, it'll come to me. I was supposed to sing. Yes. What, what? What, how that? What, what is that one song that goes? Um, He's not here. No, the first one. Oh, Lord. Somebody gonna say it? Who? Who I trust in God. Oh, yes. I trust in God. Yes. He's the what? He's the one that never, ever fails. I trust in God because I heard and he answered. How many of us now, the ones out here who, who are struggling with the fact that they don't have a father figure, but need a father figure, and they need to have someone to trust in there is a God. He's the, he's the one that sent his son here for us. For those who, who are struggling with it. See, because you will struggle without God. You may think that you're not struggling, but you will struggle. There will be a time when you're getting tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Or what people are saying, but not what God is saying. See, because when you trust in God, he will speak to you in a way that you will understand what he's saying. And then you'll have that feeling. Everybody want to talk about the feeling, but, but only listen to the people who are telling you about the feeling, who knows about the feeling. When I say by that, who knows what love is? Who knows what, what it is to be honored? If you know that meaning of what honor is, trust that person. And then continue to watch their living example. Every single one of us is a living example for the ones who are crying out on Father's Day. I don't have a father. I don't have a real father. I mean, I have had a real father. <coughs> I'm crying and talking about the ones who don't. You can get a real father. You can get a father that you will never ever give up once you get him. You can get it. You, you can get him by just saying, "I need you." I'm tired of being where I am. I'm tired of being tossed and fro out on the ocean, not knowing which way to go. I want to find that direction that people talk about, that tell me that there is a God that will do this and do that. You ask for him. You ask for him, and then you'll be able to listen to the ones who really know him. Don't be led, or don't be mis 
mistaken. If a person can't love, then they don't know our God. If a person doesn't have peace, then they don't know God. Then God will give you all of those things. And he said he would. It's yours for the asking. And I'm here to tell you, understand, there's a sovereign God who plants seeds. <coughs> he plants seeds. Look for the plant. Look for the seed. Because if he plants a seed, it's going to grow up and look like what he planted. If he planted, what's that word? Having high regard and uh, a great esteem. Adhere to what is right. You plant those seeds, it'll grow what you're looking for. He set his living example how to be like the commander of everything. And he is in control of what's going on. He is the command center. Try him for the first time and you will not be disappointed. Honor He'll give you righteousness because he is that. Love, joy, and peace. Find one who is for real in Christ. For real in Christ. Honor his father. And then you'll be able to honor a father. And smile and say, happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.